I've always liked time travel, alternate reality or parallel universes as a theme for media. I don't really remember when I was first exposed to the idea, but it must have been early. I remember being some age under 10 and having a dream where I was living far in the future, but I was the subject of an experiment where I was kept in a dreamlike simulation. I don't recall what I was being studied for though. In the dream I was woken up in error and I was being trained to assimilate into the society of the future. Now I don't know where I got those ideas from. This was around the year 2000, coincidentally around the same year The Matrix was released, but I don't know, I didn't see that until I was much older, so I'm not sure, maybe I heard people talking about it or something. Either way, it's not a new idea, but it's stuck with me since then, and any movie, TV show, or game about this subject matter totally draws me in. 12 Monkeys, Inception are also high up there. I love Netflix shows like The OA and Travelers, basically anything where there's more to reality than meets the eye. Games that I've enjoyed would be Life is Strange, Bioshock Infinite, Portal, and Quantum Break. Hi everyone, I'm Isaac and I am Shaftev, and I am trying to design a portal into a parallel universe. In a game, of course. Hit like and subscribe. Have you got any specific story themes or game mechanics that you want to build into a game? Let me know down below. So naturally, as a budding game developer, a goal would be to write a story and make a game around this kind of theme. And I've got plenty of ideas. A plethora. Many too complicated for someone as fresh as me to the scene. There are two ideas that really stuck out for me. One where you're trapped in a simulation, or a game where you lose something in a parallel universe and need to travel between it and reality in order to find it. Settled on the second, simply because my vision for the idea was easier to pull off from a production perspective. Naturally, the first thing I did was jump into my game engine of choice and get cracking on some awesome code. Actually, no. But I knew I needed to prototype out a player being able to switch between worlds so as I worked through some other projects, I slowly learnt more about the Godot engine, and I learnt more about viewports, collisions, and render layers, and at some point last month I felt confident enough that I could engineer an effect that worked well and looked convincing. The first thing I did was jump into a new project, import my 2D character controller, throw it in the trash, and rewrite it. I'll have to do a video on that soon. So it's time to start working on the prototype. And I thought, while I'm at it, I'll create a whole new sprite sheet for it too. Anyway, once I had a spiffy new 2D character controller with all the trimmings, I felt I had procrastinated enough to start working on a parallel universe. So I spent the next two weeks creating a dialogue system. Just cause. You never know. After that, I finally started working on my parallel universe. I originally was going to use viewports and render a separate scene out and then switch between the two. But I quickly realized I was probably over-engineering the solution. I knew that I wanted the two worlds to look pretty similar. It's meant to be seamless. Like in one world an area is blocked off, but in the other it isn't, so you can cross between them, find a key and open a door or whatever. The point is, they're going to be the same shape. Uh, they'll look different, there'll be minor landscape differences, and the characters you meet in each world will be different. Uh, so you can probably just toggle the visibility between them. Easy. Well, yes. This solved the issue of having to track the player's position in both worlds. He was walking on both. But guess what? Do collide with what you don't see. So to overcome this issue, I set up two different collision layers. Added the colliders on the player to a group and wrote a small function to swap over the other collision layer whenever the player switches worlds. It ended up being a bit of code. Since I needed a separate layer and group and a separate function for each group, it's tedious, but it works. And that's as complicated as the world switching went. It's relatively simple to create, and it's an interesting effect. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of levels I can come up with around this design. Hopefully I won't procrastinate too hard. Yeah, so anyway, two months have passed and I've worked on everything but this. And when I came back, I thought, you know what? I don't need to flesh out level design for this. I need to work on the visual. Yeah, that's definitely more important at this stage. So, shaders. I hate shaders, but I'm getting better at working with them and I'm slowly losing my distaste for dealing with them. They're 100% necessary for making a good looking game, so I'm going to have to get much better at making something good. My approach to this was again to keep things simple, I'm not using additional viewports to create this effect so I need to find an alternative way to display the other world when transitioning. I spent a lot of time to see if I could use light masks to achieve this, but the issue I had was whatever was higher on the scene tree was always drawn on top. So it wasn't the most viable option, 
I guess I would have to change the order of the two scenes, which are individual nodes, whenever I hit the button switch over. I don't know. Uh, the easiest way that I found to do this was with a shader where on hitting the button a texture is applied to a canvas. So the world has been switched, but from your perspective it remains the same. Then create a hole in the middle revealing the other world beneath. And on release, do the exact same thing. Continue to open the hole until it's cleared the screen. As long as the player and the camera don't move, the illusion's held up. So to ensure that, I gave it a slowdown effect. I would have liked to make it so the player can move around while peeking through the portal, but with the current setup it's just not possible. More research is required. I actually had to split the effect out into two shaders and overlay them. There's a basic shader for the screen texture and another for the portal effect. They're controlled together with an animation player. The portal shader is a Frankenstein of shaders pulled from GodotShaders.com. I'll link them down below. Uh, maybe I should upload this one onto that website. I can't really vouch for the code though. I have a basic understanding of the shader language and I can't really explain how I got here. And that's as far as I've gotten right now. I'll still need to design some interesting gameplay around this mechanic in order to prove that it's viable for making a game. Hopefully, I can do that in the next few months. So, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Is this prototype worth pursuing or is it time to move on to something else? I think it's pretty cool. Um, it's going to be difficult to see uh, in terms of level design. I don't have a lot of experience there, so I uh, better get to work on that. Uh, hopefully uh, I don't get too distracted in the next couple months designing something completely different or changing the visual style completely, because those things are more fun and easy for me to do, you know? If you've made it this far into the video, I'm also going to tell you about my Skillshare course that goes over the more technical aspects of a platformer jump. It's based off the GDC talk, Building a Better Jump by Carl Pittman which is a great resource for game developers on bringing in real world physics to your jump. In my course I show you how it can be done in the Godot game engine. We also touch on Coyote time and jump buffering, which combine together to create a great user experience. So if you're on Skillshare, then click the link down below. And if you're not, you can sign up for a free trial and watch. It's a great way to support my channel, which is still small and growing. Speaking of growing, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell, and most of all, have a great day or night, wherever you are. Thanks for watching.